thought we'd uh, sing a song that's kind of fitting for uh, this time, this trials that we're going through, uh, one day at a time. you uh, all are doing well uh, I miss you all and I look forward to seeing you uh, again sometime soon if you have your Bibles uh, if you would turn to the uh, book of Acts the book of Acts could you imagine standing uh, on trial for your faith for what you believe in here in the book of Acts Acts chapter 24 uh, Paul is standing in trial for his faith, for what he believes in. In Acts chapter 24, we're looking at verses 14 uh, through 16 tonight. Acts chapter 24, verses 14 through 16. We'll give me a moment. I'm setting up here. I apologize. Acts chapter 24, verse 14 through 16. Hopefully you've had enough time to find your place in your Bible. And like again, I said, uh, like I said, uh, Paul is here uh, standing uh, on trial for what he believes in. Acts chapter 24, verse 14. 
Paul says, but I admit this to you, I worship the God of my ancestors according to the way, which they call a sect, believing everything that is in accordance is in accordance with the law and written in the prophets. I have hope, a hope in God, which these men themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection both of the righteous and the unrighteous. In verse 16, I always strive to have a clear conscience toward God and men. And so, that's what I'd like to uh, speak to you all about tonight, is about the resurrection. About the resurrection. We just uh, celebrated uh, Resurrection Sunday, Christ's Resurrection. And I want to uh, discuss two points with you tonight. First is that Jesus taught a resurrection. Jesus taught a resurrection and Jesus proved a resurrection. Those two points. Jesus taught a resurrection and Jesus proved a resurrection. You know, some of us might have uh, given some thought about what's going to happen to us after we die. Uh, you know, that's a talking point uh, between individuals. You might uh, find yourself discussing your faith and you're talking to somebody and you just might ask them, what do you believe? What do you believe is going to happen to you after you die, when you die? You know, none of us know the time or the day you know, when uh, our time on earth is to be done. Nobody knows the time or the day or the hour. You know, but Jesus taught that there will be a resurrection. And here in this chapter in Acts, Paul is standing on trial for what he believes. Because Paul is going around, he's, he's preaching about the resurrection. He's preaching about the resurrection of Christ. And so Paul is standing on trial here before Felix. And he's giving his defense saying, hey, I believe the same thing as uh, these other folks do. These, these Pharisees, they believe in the resurrection. He says, that's, what, that's the reason why I'm on trial is because I believe in a resurrection. But I'm preaching about the resurrection of Christ. And here Paul says that he's standing on trial for believing in the resurrection. And this is a teaching of the Bible. Uh, like I said, this is what the Pharisees believed in. Paul uh, was a former Pharisee. And so he already believed in the resurrection. But here Paul is standing on trial for belief in the resurrection. And so we see that that's a clear teaching in the Bible. The Bible uh, emphasizes the resurrection. And before we get ahead of ourselves going past the Gospels, let's rewind and go back through the Gospels with those two points, that Jesus taught a resurrection. And secondly, Jesus not only taught about a resurrection, but Jesus proved a resurrection. And like I was saying, when we uh, talk with people about our faith, that can be a good talking point about what do they believe is going to happen uh, when... Uh, they leave this earth, you know, when they die, what's going to happen to them? Do they believe anything about the afterlife? Do they believe in the afterlife? You know, the Bible teaches, Jesus taught, that there's a soul and a body. And we're not just a body, but we're also a soul. A soul inhabits the body. And so the resurrection is not just dealing with one or the other. It's dealing with both. It's dealing with both the soul and the body. The resurrection says that uh, we will the body will be be resurrected and it will be different from the, the bodies that we have now it's uh, corruptible bodies that we have there uh, that are capable to decay now but the body that will be re resurrected as a, as the Bible uh, teaches it will be incorruptible and so it'll be a different type of body but it will still be identifiable you know, I'll still be able to recognize uh, my friends and my loved ones, my family. I'll still be able to recognize. I'll still be, I'd be able to identify them. And so the Bible teaches of a resurrection. Jesus taught about a resurrection. And Jesus proved a resurrection. You know, Jesus demonstrated on earth through his ministry that he had the authority and the power to give life to the dead. That he 
had the authority and power to give life to the dead. And this is one of the reasons why the authorities sought to go and kill him. You, know, you might remember when he uh, called Lazarus out of the tomb. And he had uh, uh, these uh, more and more people would go and they would, they would follow him. The crowds would, would be drawn to him. He gained more followers. And this riled up the authorities. They said, oh, what, what are we accomplishing here? You know, he's, he's calling forth the dead. He's, he's, he's raising the dead. You know, they, they, they said, we, we got to put a stop to this. His crowds are, are, are chasing after him. He's, he's getting too large of crowds. And so that was part of the reason why they sought to kill Jesus. And you can read about that in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 45 through 54. And you know, this uh, raising of the dead was part of the good news that was given back to John the Baptist. We had just uh, discussed that a, f a few uh, weeks ago about John the Baptist being in prison. And John was asking, uh, is Jesus the Messiah? He's the one that we can expect. And Jesus sent John the Baptist back the good news of the things that was taking place with Jesus' ministry, the healing and, and uh, all these other miracles. And one of the miracles that Jesus was performing was this raising of the dead. And so that's what he sent back to John, was this good news, this hope in the prison, he might remember. And here we were talking about uh, this, this hope, this hope. And that's what, uh, you know, uh, Paul said here in Acts 24, verse 15. He says, I have hope in God. I have hope in God. Where does your hope rest? Where does your hope rest? You know, we all need hope of these times and I would pray that your hope is is in God it's in the power of God it's in his word and his gospel and it's in who Jesus is you know this would be a time of reflection who do you say Jesus is like we talked about uh, this this last Sunday you know Jesus is life he not only has the authority and the power to give life but he is life if you turn into the uh, first John, the epistle of John, John would characterize Jesus, calling Jesus the word of life. And John emphasized Jesus' uh, uh, character, his nature, that Jesus is life, he is life, that the life appeared, what John said, the life appeared, and he even uh, called Jesus the eternal life, the eternal life. Jesus is life. When Jesus was uh, teaching his disciples about what would take place, about looking forward to the cross, Jesus said the Son of Man would be raised from the dead. He'd use words like that, raised from the dead and raised to life. And Jesus was speaking, of course, about his mission uh, that he was to undergo. And so the hope of the Christian is that, hey, this life is not all. It is. Yes, this, is, this life is a life of brokenness. It's a life of hurt. It's a life of pain. It's a life of suffering. But that's not the end of it. And that's what's so glorious about the cross. It's like what Jesus showed us. That, hey, this, this is not only just a teaching, but it's, it's a demonstration. It's proof. The cross was proof. It was evidence of what Jesus came to do and to teach and to give. And so Jesus, uh, as he was teaching... Uh, there were folks who believed differently. You know, you had these different sects, just as you, uh, as just, as, just as, we, as we have now, people that believe different things. And there's these different religious sects at Jesus' times. And uh, one was the Pharisees, which we talked about with Paul. They believed in the resurrection. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection. But there's another sect called the Sadducees. And the Sadducees, they did not believe in the resurrection. And then when I was going to school, and uh, we would discuss some of these different sects, these religious sects that was during Jesus' time. Uh, the, the sect of the Sadducees came up. And one easy way to remember the Sadducees is they are sad, you see. They're sad, you see, because they don't believe in the resurrection. And we read about Jesus' convergent conversation uh, with them in Matthew. Let's turn there. Uh, Matthew chapter... 22. Let's read about Jesus' discussion with the Sadducees here. And you find that in uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 23. 
it says that same day some Sadducees who say there is no resurrection came up to him and questioned him teacher Moses said if a man dies having no children his brother is to marry his wife and raise up offspring for his brother now there were seven brothers among us the first got married and died having no offspring he left his wife to his brother the same thing happened to the second also and the third and so on to all seven verse 27 last of all the woman died in the resurrection then which they didn't believe in whose wife will she be of the seven for they all had married her verse 29 jesus answered them you are mistaken because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now concerning the resurrection of the dead, haven't you read what was spoken to you by God? Verse 32, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Verse 33, and when the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Jesus taught about the resurrection. And here he was teaching uh, this religious sect of the Sadducees who believed that there was no resurrection. And so they're trying to you know, kind of uh, get at Jesus and saying, okay, well, here's a difficult one for you. Hey, if uh, this man was married and died and uh, they married this woman and uh, so forth and so on uh, whose wife will she be of the seven because they had all married her and so they're uh, just kind of like the pharisees did often they they would present these different types of questions to jesus to see if they could stump him you know see if uh, his teaching held jesus taught that there is a resurrection we see that here in this uh, text Jesus says there is a, re a resurrection that's a specific time a specific time he says at the resurrection you see there in verse 30 in the resurrection there's a specific time that the resurrection will happen and because of the Sadducees wrong belief system uh, they say that there is no resurrection Jesus said to them you are an error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God and I've had some conversations uh, this week uh, with some folks and you know they believe in tolerance that uh, you know uh, you shouldn't disagree some some folks even believe today that disagreeing with another person's belief is uh, almost like a sign of hatred you know if you don't agree with them well you know you're just full of hate you know tolerance is the way of love but we see here Jesus he did not leave people in their faulty belief systems but he uh, wanted to correct them he wanted to, to give them the truth and here he confronts the Sadducees with their wrong belief system that they believe their beliefs are in error because they say that there is no resurrection Jesus said to them here that you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God they did not know they were ignorant of the fact of the scriptures what they say and they are also ignorant of the power of God what he does and uh, you know looking through the scriptures you know so, uh, so some of the teachings some, some of the readings is difficult you know it takes time to, to go through the scriptures and to read them and and not just read them but meditate on them and allow god to speak to you through his word and uh you know sometimes we can glance over things maybe we read it too fast uh, what's, what's interesting about the Bible is, uh, you know, each time you read, you might see something different. And God might open up something different to you. And so looking back at the Old Testament, because that's what the Sadducees had. They had the Old Testament. And so we can look back and see, uh, should they have known about the resurrection? 
Well, it's interesting. Uh, let's take Abraham, for exa example. Uh, if we turn to the New Testament, it gives us a little more insight into what the Old Testament uh, showed. But in the New Testament, in the book of Romans, it says that Abraham believed. You know, Abraham is the, the uh, father of our faith. You know, he's, he, we see him as a great example of faith. And it says that Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead. Did Abraham ever uh, witness uh, the dead being called back to life? There's one instance uh, where in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, it says that uh, Abraham reasoned. He reasoned. He used his reason. He reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. And this example, of course, that Hebrews is referring to is when Abraham was told to take his only son, Isaac, and go up to the mountain of Moriah and there to sacrifice him. And you might remember uh, what Abraham tells his servants as they're going to the mountain and, and uh, Abraham is going to leave his servants behind. You might remember what Abraham told his servants. That me, and uh, referring to Abraham, he said, uh, me and my son Isaac are going to go up to the mountain and we're going to go worship and then we'll come back. Remember that? He said, we will come back. And so Abraham reasoned. He, 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 he may not have the whole picture. He knew God's promise that through Isaac, uh, through his seed, Isaac, uh, it'd be, his, uh, it'd be reckoned. Uh, you know, the, the promises would, would come true. And so Abraham might not have the whole picture, but he knew that God would even uh, uh, raise the dead. He reasoned that God could even raise the dead. We think of reason. Reason is something that we do. We come to a logical conclusion based on prior factual knowledge. And so uh, Abraham knew enough about God, about God's power, that God uh, uh, never leave him, he would not forsake him, that God had promised, God had given these promises to Abram. Abraham knew enough about God to come to this conclusion. And there in the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 17, it says that Abraham believed the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. And he was able to use his reason that God could even raise the dead. You know, nothing's too uh, hard for God. You know, uh, when I was doing the research for uh, this message, I was thinking about how God first formed the man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils. You know, nothing's too hard. Nothing's too hard. And so Jesus was telling the Sadducees that they should know these things, that through scriptures, uh, uh, they should know. They should know. They should know that there's a resurrection. And there's other instances in the Bible that it shows about the resurrection. Uh, you can find it in Daniel and in Isaiah and a few other places in the Old Testament that speaks about the resurrection. And uh, even the Valley of the Dry Bones in Ezekiel, that gives them a, a, a hint, a, a foreshadowing of, of the resurrection. And so there's places in the Old Testament where the Sadducees should uh, have known and should have believed in uh, the resurrection. And so Jesus is telling them that they're an heir their belief system is in error. Jesus didn't just let them slide and say, okay, well, you believe what you want to believe. No, Jesus sought to correct them and said that you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. They're ignorant of the fact uh, that the scriptures, what they say, and the power of God, what he does. And so Jesus is teaching about the resurrection here. And this is one of the instances where we give... He gives some insight about what the res resurrection is like, what happens. And Jesus is teaching them about the resurrection, saying that people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. Neither marry nor be given in marriage. Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. And he says that people will be 
like the angels in heaven. They'll be angel-like, angelic. You know, what might come to your mind when you think of angels? You might think of uh, wings. You know, uh, uh, the Bible doesn't give uh, too many descriptions about uh, the angels. Uh, so we really don't know a whole lot about that. Uh, but what do you... What do you think about the afterlife? Do you ever think about the afterlife? What it'll be like? Uh, we've talked about before about the body that we receive. It won't be uh, corruptible, but it'll be incorruptible. Uh, mortal must put on immortality. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So it'll be a different uh, quality. Uh, the body that we, re we will receive. Be angel-like, Jesus says. And so Jesus points the Sadducees back to the scriptures. You know, if we want to know what afterlife will be like, it's going to be found on these pages. You know, what Jesus tells us. It's not about something that we uh, just conjure up or what somebody has wrote some uh, crazy story about. No, it's what Jesus tells us here inside the words, what God tells us in the scriptures. And Jesus points the Sadducees back to the scriptures about the resurrection of the dead. And he says to the Sadducees, and I want you to get this, this is important here, what Jesus says about the scriptures. Jesus tells the Sadducees about the resur resurrection of the dead. He says to them, have you not read what God said to you? Have you not read what God said to you? And you see that there in this text. You're mistaken because you don't not know the scriptures or the power of God. Haven't you read, in verse 31, haven't you read what was spoken to you by God? Isn't that wonderful there? And Jesus is referring to scriptures as God speaking to us. God speaking to us. And when Jesus is, is talking to the, to the Sadducees about having not read, of, of, of course they've read the scriptures. It's one thing just to read. You go through it. But there's another thing to meditate, to read, and to comprehend. Comprehend, not to be ignorant of what the teaching of the Word is, but to read and comprehend. I believe that's talking about meditation and, and dwelling on it, marinating on it, letting, letting the Word speak to you, letting God speak to you through His Word, to read God speaking to us through the Scripture. And then you hear Jesus was telling the Sadducees, uh, have you not read about what God said to you? And this reading is not just reading, but it's meditating on the word, allowing God to speak to us. That scriptures are God speaking to us. The word of God. And Jesus says here, have you not read what God said to you? Verse number 32, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, a God of Isaac. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Of the living you know there's uh, different reasons for the cross that's highlighted throughout Scripture and one of those reasons uh, is Jesus be Lord of both the dead and the living we find that in Romans chapter 14 verse 9 that Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. The first reason for the cross is that Jesus be Lord. Lord. Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. Romans 14 verse 9. The Bible also tells us that Christ suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. Hebrews 2 verse 9 we see Christ as Lord and here in this verse Christ as substitute Christ suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone our substitute tasting death for us third uh, reason for the cross is that by his death he broke the power of him who holds the power of death Jesus as conqueror, by his death he broke the power of him who holds the power of death, and that is the devil. 
hold the power of death and free those who all their lives were held in slavery. And that verse is found also in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Christ as conqueror, breaking the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery. So Jesus is Lord, he is substitute, he is conqueror, and he is liberator, freeing those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. And the reason the Son of God appeared, one of the reasons was to destroy the devil's work. And that's found in 1 John 3, verse 8. So Jesus is victor. Jesus is Lord. He is substitute. He is conqueror. He is liberator. And he is victor. And the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. 1 John 3, verse 8. You might recall there in the um, book of Genesis, Satan, uh, the ancient serpent in the garden, had his own views on death. And so many that we might talk to uh, this day and age have their own views of death. All that this happens to us after death or that happens to us after death. And notice that Satan in the garden, he had his own views of death. He said to the woman, you might recall in Genesis chapter 3 verse 4, he said to the woman, you will not die. Hence you will continue on. He told the woman that it is an opening to be like God in Genesis 3 verse 5. And we know, uh, because we have continued reading of the account, that this opening led to shame and guilt and fear. That fear. And this is what Jesus, as a liberator, came to do, to free us from the fear. Free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. And notice, too, what that verse tells us, that fear led to slavery. So it was a Satan in the garden. When he told the woman that you will not die, but you will continue on. He told the woman that it was an opening to be like God. But that opening led to shame, guilt, and fear. And that fear led to slavery. It led to slavery. And Jesus is our liberator. What does the Bible say about death? That it's appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment. Hebrews 9 verse 27. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. The fixed order for all men is to die once only and to be judged after death. When they die, finality is stamped on their life work. So Satan deceives about the finality and the nature of death. He'll uh, give different uh, Counts of what happens after death. He'll talk about reincarnation and all these other things. Satan deceives about the finality and the nature of death. God, through his word, says there will be judgment. The soul that sins shall die. Ezekiel 18, verse 20. And so Christ came to break the power of the devil. That the devil does not get the final word about death. We read uh, in the sermon this past Sunday about what Jesus says to those who believe uh, God who sent Jesus, who believe the Father, they will not be judged. Jesus takes on the just punishment on our behalf, the just for the unjust. And so Christ came to set the captive free, proclaiming and demonstrating victory over death by his resurrection. Jesus not only taught about the resurrection, but proved it by his own resurrection. The death of Jesus brought life. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it dies, it produces many seeds john chapter 20 or john chapter 12 verse 24 and so we see jesus there we saw jesus uh, last week last this past sunday 
that Jesus died on the cross. And when he died, he cried out in a, in a loud voice. And he gave up his spirit. Matthew 27, verse 50. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split, and the tombs broke open. And the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. And they came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection. And they went to the holy city and appeared to many people. Jesus taught about the resurrection and Jesus proved the resurrection. And I'd like to conclude with uh, a couple more verses there in the book of Romans. It says this, Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 13, it says this, Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 13 says this you however are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of God lives in you if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ he does not belong to him verse 10 now if Christ is in you the body is dead because of sin but the spirit gives life because of righteousness verse 11 and if the spirit of him who raised this and of Verse 11, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring your mortal bodies to life through his spirit who lives in you. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not obligated to the flesh to live according to the flesh, because if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. But if the spirit you put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. Hope everybody has a good rest of the week. Until next time, bye-bye.